Hey everyone, come on, it is Winning Wednesday. Let's go. We're gonna grow tonight. Come on, we're gonna have an increased mindset, a growth mindset, and it's gonna be an amazing night tonight. Hey, I want, do me a favor right now. Why don't you share this content right now? I don't want your friends, I don't want your people, come on, your crew to miss this tonight because I believe it's gonna implore you, uh, empower you, and build you up. And tonight, as we dive into tonight, we're gonna be talking about IMAGE, the acronym of IMAGE, I-M-A-G-E. So, hey, I wanna give you time for you to just go and share this content right now. And we're just so grateful that you have allowed us to be in your space tonight and uh, or morning, afternoon, wherever you may be. Thank you so much. It's never the same without you. And uh, to everyone that has subscribed to any of our social media handles, thank you so much for being a subscriber and continue to do us a favor and be a social media evangelist. Get the good news out, get the gospel out, get hope out. We can't do it without you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go subscribe now, hit the notification bell. Let's go and let's grow together. Let us be the cheerleaders in your corner. Come on to cheer you on in this journey to your best life now. And uh, so I'm super, super excited today. Also because you know, the whole month of June, I mentioned in a prior broadcast uh, in, in this month, is that there's birthdays everywhere in City Church International, in my home, and just, it's amazing. A lot of our friends from Chicago, San Antonio, our leaders, my family. As a matter of fact, today, come on, my daughter-in-law, her birthday, Megan, come on, put it on the chat line. Come on, put it on the chat line. Let her know, happy birthday. Come on, give her, you know, I'm just super, super excited for the next, you know, that is in path for her and, and our son, which is her husband. We're super stoked the path that they're on. And also my brother's watching or listening. I want to give a big shout out to my brother. Come on, he's my little brother, Eric. Come on, big shout out to you from your big bro. Happy birthday, bro. And uh, just super, super excited. So tonight, let's pray because I believe that God's going to have his way with you right where you're at. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for tonight. We thank you for your grace is all sufficient. We thank you that tonight people and lives will be transformed, will be impacted, will be inspired, Father, Lord God, from the inside out in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hey, do us a favor. Give us a big shout out where you're watching, where you're listening, represent. Let's lean in, let's be some leaners, come on, and get on the chat line. Get engaged, get involved, let's go. Talk to me back, come on, I believe today we're gonna grow. And you know, I believe that the, the greatest leaders are the greatest students, and leaders are readers. One of the reasons I love to take notes at all times is because I go back and I read it. I go back and read it and go chew on it, go meditate on it, and then I start putting it into practice. I start implementing what I read, what I learn, what I grow, because I always continually want to be evolving, expanding, and elevating in every area of my life. And so, come on, get your journal, get your paper, get your pen, and let's grow tonight. It is Winning Wednesday. Let's go. So I want to talk about the word image. That word image, or the acronym of image, I want to, I want to talk about that because there's a lot of people that have an image where the enemy has put so many labels on you that now you believe every label that the enemy has placed over your life. And, you know, the image of failure, the image of disappointment, the image of not good enough, the image of, you know, I'm not intelligent enough, I, you know, I never went to school, the, the image, I, I wasn't a good father, the image of, I wasn't a good husband, the image of a, of a bad business leader, all these different images. And we get so wrapped up in a whirlwind um, when the world starts putting all these labels on us that we start to not only hear these images about us, 
but they become seeds of in, in in our thought process. Then it goes into our verbiage. We start speaking that we're we're not good enough. You know, I I'm not a good enough father. You know, and I want to remind somebody tonight that your past does not define who you are. As a matter of fact, last time I checked, labels are meant for canned goods. Come on. Those, that's where the labels belong. They belong on canned goods. They belong on all these marketing items, but not on you. And I'm still a believer that God is a God not only that can peel those labels off you, but he has rolled the stone away from you. And I believe today you're going to learn and be equipped and be empowered that you are the image of Jesus. You're the image maker of Jesus. I'm reminded by one of our sweetest elders, and she was an amazing parishioner at City Church International. She has now transitioned, and we have celebrated her graduation. Her name is Carolyn May. I remember meeting her, reading her book, uh, Image Maker, and uh, I, I truly missed her because she was a cheerleader, you know, always cheering me on as she would always continue to cheer me on and say, come on, come on, pastor, preach, keep preaching Jesus, keep preaching Bible, keep preaching to the people, you know, and, and keep winning souls and discipling people. And, um, and, but that book, Image Maker, and reading the word, <clears throat> I've put these five, five words or five letters to the word image that I believe are going to help you. Let's read first Job 10.8. Job 10.8 reads this, Your hands have made me and fashioned me, an intricate unity, yet you would destroy me. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Just think about that. Look, look what it says here in Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. I love this because everybody knows this scripture because it's a very universal scripture. And look what it says. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds on, of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Uh -huh. So the first thing I want to remind you, he spoke everything else into existence. But when it got to you and I, he had made us. He manufactured us. We're the only species in the world that he created you and I with his hands. Come on, I want you to hear that. You know, because you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. You've been handcrafted by God. This thumbprint, I'm the only one with this thumbprint in the whole world. I am, you and I are so unique in our own way, but we are his image. And today, a lot of people still are being defined by their past. They're being defined by their defeats and their failures and the mistakes and the wrong words they've said and the things they've done that they feel that this image is still on them. But can I tell you? Jesus is enough. And I want to remind you that you are his image. So if you're taking notes right now, the letter I, I want to begin with, the letter I stands for intelligence. In other words, there is intelligence in you. You are smart enough. And what I'm saying is intelligence is you have the ability to comprehend and profit from our experience because we all go through an experience in life uh, the word intelligent is also the ability to reason the ability to plan the ability to resolve also the word intelligence is to be multi-dimensional that you you have the ability to do more than one thing at a time come on you have that intelligence. You have that intelligence to be social, to be emotional, to be relational. 
Proverbs 4.23, look what it reads. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Come on. I believe that this word image, you have intelligence. You may say, but I'm a dropout. I didn't even get a GED. I didn't even go to college. I didn't go to the university. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. But guess what? You're also looking at an imperfect man saved by grace that didn't have that either, but it's only grace and grace alone and truth that has given me now this ability, this intelligence, not my intelligence, but the mind of Christ that is also in my life to speak to you. I'm the last person. I'm the least of these to be the one behind this camera or be on this camera right now. So you are intelligent, you are brilliant, you are smart, you are enough. Why? Because Jesus is enough. And look at this, the letter M. The letter M is makeup, the makeup of who you are. You know, the word M or that letter M or makeup is a, the synonym for personality, the makeup of who you are, the unique expression of who you are, who I am. It's our distinct. It's what makes us unique. It's what makes us different. You know, it's who you are. It's your personal traits. Come on. And I believe your personal traits and everything that the enemy wants to do to shut you down, he wants to shut your makeup down because then inferiority comes in and indifference come in and what if I say it wrong? What if I don't say it right? And what are they going to think of me? And, you know, are they going to talk about me? And maybe, maybe I'll mess it up because, you know, all these other years I've messed everything up. You know, maybe I just don't fit in. And can I tell you, I still don't fit in because I wasn't created to fit in. Why? Because the high priest lives in me. I was created to be a difference maker. I was created to be different. I was created to be me. And God can only use the original makeup of who you are. I've learned one thing is to live, to live and be God's original and don't live and be a carbon copy. Come on, don't be cheap on yourself because God ain't cheap on you. Did you hear that? And I'm here to tell you today that the makeup of who you are, I am spontaneous. I don't know, people say that I'm really radical and I'm this and that. I really don't think so. I, I just feel that I'm just a normal guy. I'm a normal guy because people think that I'm radical because of just things that happen around me or in my life. No, I just apply what the Bible says. You know, but I'm also humorous. I love to joke around. I love to have fun. I'm adventurous. I'm a risk taker. That's who I am. And I love it. You know, and the letter A. Come on, so if you, if you just saw that, the letter I for intelligence, the letter M for makeup, and now the letter A, ability. Come on, you have ability. You have capacity. You have skill and skill set. Your ability may not be mine, and my ability may not be yours. We all don't have everything, but we have something. Did you hear that? We all don't have everything, but we do have something. You have to establish goals, and you got to reach them. Why? Because you have ability. You, this is why you write those goals. So you can have an aim, you can have a target, because when you have no goals established, you're aimless. And, 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 so, and, and the reason we put goals is there because you have ability. You have the ability to reach them. You have the ability to crush them and to dominate. You have ability. Come on, if you're tracking with me and you're writing your notes, the letter I, intelligence, the letter M. Come on, makeup, the letter A. Come on, ability. And here's the letter G, gifts. Come on, did you hear that? Gifts. The letter gifts. You got to unwrap you got to unwrap the gifts that God has placed in your life. Whether you believe it or not, there is gifts inside your life. And maybe you're listening to right now and you're probably saying, no, 
I don't know what my gifts are. I really don't have gifts. And, you know, I, I, just, I just don't believe that. Well, whether you believe it or not, I'm here to tell you, you do have gifts. Those gifts are from God. He placed them in you. You know, you are gifted. Maybe no one's ever told you that you're gifted, but you are gifted. When you were born, you were birthed with gifts. It's not like God is now, you know, wanting to put gifts in you. No, when you were birthed, you were birthed with gifts. But it's up to you and I to unwrap the gifts inside of you. And, and not only that, but when you are born again, then you were given spiritual gifts. What do I mean by spiritual gifts? Look at what it says here in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Look at what it says. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Oh, no. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to teach each one for the profit of all. Come on. So when you're born again, you were given spiritual gifts. Look at what the book of Ephesians say in Ephesians 4, 7. I love this. And I, I, I'm reading this because I want to prove to you, I want to show you that it's in the Bible that you have gifts. You have gifts. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ gift. According to the measure of Christ gift. And like I said, your gifts are not my gifts. My gifts are not your gifts. Maybe your gift is not the gift to be on this camera set. But maybe you're the, you're the gift. You have that gift for pictures. You have the gift for photography, videography, production, film, screenwriting. You know, all that design and all those things. But when you have a gift, we have gifts. And when we are born again... God has given us a measure, according to his grace, spiritual gifts. Do you know that our spiritual gifts, when we intertwine them, interwoven them, or it's called collab or collaboration, that it's to complement one another, it's to add value to one another, it's to, you know what, it, it's, it's just coming together. Because I truly began to believe that when we come together, a collective of all gifts, together we can change the world because of the gifts. And I'm reminded that God's expression are done through God's image. Did you hear that? God's expression are done through God's image. In other words, what I'm telling you is when you live out God's original identity and you start to function, in God's identity, he will start to express his expressions through your life. God's power starts to flow through you. God's gifting, God's anointing starts to flow through you. And hell has no power over the God gift over your life. Hell has no power over your God gift. We have the authority over death, grave, hell and demons you heard that right those demons that tell you you're not good enough you're, you're a product of your past you know the ones that tell you there is no more dream you blew it you messed up you're not good enough you won't make it it won't happen you, you have the power over death grave hell and demons you have that authority the devil wants to keep you in the bench the, key, the devil wants to keep you sidelined. Side the devil wants to keep you muted. The devil wants to keep you distracted and confused. And, and, and so you don't know your image. So you don't discover the image of Christ and who you are in him. As a matter of fact, when you begin to lose yourself is where you begin to find yourself. <laughs> Let me say that again. When you begin to lose yourself, you begin to find yourself. And... That's how it's been in my life. When I lost myself in the presence of God, I begin to find myself in who I am in Christ. Huh. The devil wants to keep you in the bench. He wants to keep you uninvolved. He wants to keep you disconnected. 
Can I tell you that your anointing and your gift is a threat? Come on, that's a combination. That's a that's an uppercut and a lower, come on, a lower cut right there. That's a one-two punch. That that your anointing and gift is a threat. You see, when you function, when you function in your gift, the devil has to raise up the white flag because he can't win against God's anointed and gifted. He needs, he'll start to wave the white flag and say, I'm done, I'm done. When you begin to operate in your image, in your gifting, in your anointing, he begins to surrender. And why? Because then you start to function in your gift, the authority, the power that has defeated death, grave, hell, and demons. Come on. And the last letter, E, is for experiences. You and I have experiences. We've had good experiences and bad experiences. We probably even have experiences that we don't want to even remember. And then we have those experiences that we still cherish and we remember that we celebrate. We all have them. But do you know that you and I are shaped by our experiences? Our experience tells us something of what we are to be. And they start to build you. They start to mold you. No matter how painful that experience has been, no matter how tragic, how catastrophic it's been, maybe it was a Category 5 hurricane that came in your life and just brought destruction because maybe you caused it or it just happened your way. No matter how it's been in your life, I believe that all experiences are there to mold you and make you stronger. Did you hear that? All those experiences are there to mold you and make you stronger, bolder, brave, courageous. Come on. I myself have some unique experiences. But can I, I want to remind you of this. God has an intentional strategy. God has endowed his blessing, his power with his supply upon you. Look at Philippians 2.13. Look what it says. Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. He endows you with his blessing, with his power. Why? Because God has an intentional strategy for your life. As you live God's design for your life, the result will be energy for your day. When, when you should have been worn, worn out, when you should have been tired and frustrated and ready to quit and say, no more, I can't go, you know, that energy keeps you going. Come on. That energy that's molding you and making you stronger keeps you going. When you're operating in your gift, it keeps you energized. You know, if you want to be more godly or be more like God, listen closely. If you want to be more godly or be like God, write this down. You have to spend more time with him. As a matter of fact, you have to spend more time on Route 66. You're probably wondering, what in the world is Route 66? It's called the 66 books in the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. You know, be who God intended you to be. And it's the Holy Spirit inside of you, inside of me, that makes you steadfast as a believer and as a Jesus follower. I close with this today. Because there's only two things you can do today with your image. Here it is. I'm about to drop a bomb. You can choose to be a God pleaser or you can choose to be nothing. Who will you be today? Come on, I believe you're ready to step into your image. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, I want to give you this opportunity to simply say, Jesus, I give you my life. If that's you watching or listening, come on, only God can, come on. He's the one that has already removed the stone off your life so you can step into the likeness of who he created you to be. 
Just simply say, Jesus, I give you my life. <clears throat> That's simple. Open up your heart and say, Jesus, I give you my life. The moment you open up your heart, Jesus is coming into your heart. You become a new creature, a new creation in him. Guess what? You have a new label and that label is you are an image maker. Come on, let's go. Come on, I'm so proud of you. Stay on Route 66. Come on, stay on Route 66 and find out more of what God has to say about your life. I also want to say thank you to every generous giver, you know, for your faithful partnership, for all those faithful partners con continually that faithfully tithe and give and sow and are generous to see a billion soul harvest. We can't do it without you. It is very simple, safe, and secure. Just click the link in the bio, go online. You can click to give online. And we want to say thank you. And we declare and decree Psalm 65, 11, that he will crown your year with his goodness. His path will drip with his abundance. We decree and declare that you think, you believe, you expect, you receive, increase, increase, increase in Jesus name. Come on. We're believing and trusting God, all things new over your life. Come on, and let's go into the mission field. Love God, love people, serve others. Come on, and change the world. Let's go live out God's image in your life. Don't forget, share this content. Let's go.